Well, good morning. It's great to be here in St John the Baptist Church in Wolverley. I'm the Reverend Bridget Woodall, I'm team vicar in the Kidderminster Izmir team, for those of you that have not met me before. So this morning we are remembering her back over the last year, I suppose, we, we've come to the end of the church calendar and we're about to enter into the new church calendar, um, start a new year uh, next, next week uh, as we enter into the Advent season. But today we celebrate, we um, remember Christ as King, it's Christ the King Sunday. All the responses are ones that I hope you will be familiar with. If you're not, just respond in your heart or say something out loud to God. Um, even if it's not the words that um, we, we use, it doesn't matter. But just respond, just join in in any way that you're able to. The important thing is that we meet with God, that we draw close to God, to the God who loves us. Uh, loved us so much that he sent Jesus for us to this world. So welcome. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So a prayer as we gather. God of our days and years, we have set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. We just pause for a moment as we bring to mind those things that separate us from God, the things that we've done that we wish we really hadn't done, and those things that we haven't done that we wish we had done, those things that get in the way of us being close to God. And I invite you at the end of each section to respond, to echo the words, Lord have mercy or Christ have mercy. The kingdom is yours, but we turn from your just rule. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. The power is yours, but we trust in our own strength and power. Christ, have mercy. Christ. Have mercy. The glory is yours, but we fall short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. So may Almighty God, who sent his Son into this world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So I have Richard, one of our vicars in training, uh, and, um, uh, with me this morning, who's very kindly filming everything for me. But he's going to come and read our two Bible readings to us. Thank you, Richard. The first reading is from Ephesians 1, chapter 15, sorry, verse 15 to the end. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. 
And our second reading today is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verse 31 to the end. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, and gave you food, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger, and welcomed you, or naked, and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Thank you, Richard. It's nice to have another voice when uh, you're filming on otherwise on your own in church. So uh, I hope that works for you as well. So let's pray as we come to consider these readings this morning and what they might mean for us. Heavenly Father, as we hear your word, would you speak to our hearts and transform our lives through your Holy Spirit, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, today we celebrate Christ the King, a day in the church year, the last Sunday of the church year, when we stop and consider Christ as King before moving into Advent and the Christmas season. We're reminded today of the king who sits on the throne, separating the sheep from the goats. We hear of the good shepherd who came to save the lost. We t hear too of who the sheep are, how they will be known, not for their words or good intentions, but for their acts of kindness and love. We hear how the kingdom of God is revealed and shown through acts of kindness and love that the sheep show to others. For the past few Sundays, we've heard a variety of passages encouraging and urging us to live out the kingdom ways of God. Just last week, we heard of the parable of the talents, where we were encouraged to share and use our resources, our gifts, the good news with those around us. And today we're pointed to Christ the King, who will separate the sheep from the goats. Christ the King will welcome the sheep on his right hand to a promised kingdom which has been prepared for us since the world began. What a wonderful thought 
There's a place that's been reserved for you, for me, since the beginning of time. There's a place that is yours. It has your name, my name on it, and no one else can take it. We need to be aware too that there is judgment and it's all about love. If we've expressed love, we need not fear. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. The puzzled people asked, when was this? And they hear the reply, just as you did it to the least of, of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. The key here is that is the way that we deal with others, is the way that we deal with God. I read a book recently by David Adams, and I love how he puts it. And I'm going to quote him because I don't think I could put it any better. If we do not listen to others, we're not likely to listen to God. If, you're, if we're mean towards others, we have a mean relationship with God. If we only like people who obey us, we'll seek a puppet God. Our faith is not one that is out of this world. Our faith is reflected in our relationships with each other as well as with God. Some words, some great words of wisdom there. This passage challenges us to see the good, the potential in everyone. We're challenged to look to those people who live on the margins of our society, of our community, to love, to show kindness. I want to end with a story, an illustration which I found a helpful way of thinking about this passage. Christopher wanted to serve the king. He wanted to go to the palace and give himself to serve the king, but he was held up. First he had to look after his ageing parents. When he set off he had a gift for the king, but he met a poor family who had been robbed of their belongings and he gave them the gift. Later on, he met a family whose cart had got stuck in the mud. He stayed to help them, and then he got sprayed in mud. Now he had no gift, and his fine clothes were filthy. He felt he could not journey on, but something encouraged him, words that he'd heard long ago. When he finally reached the palace, he received a royal welcome. He was about to apologise for the state of himself. When the king said, you've been a great help to me over the years, in the way you cared for your parents, in the way you gave to the poor, and when you helped those in need. I was there and it was me you gave your help and love to. Welcome into the fullness of the kingdom, which you have served for a long time. So as we serve Christ the King, May our acts of kindness and love be sacrificial. May they speak to those around us of a God of love who judges on love. Let's just pause. Let's pause in all that's happening at the moment. If ever we needed kindness and love, it's now. Let's pause and let's ask God to help us with that. Just as you did it to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Loving, giving God, we thank you for sending your son Give us fresh understanding of Christ the King. Your kingdom come, your will be done in us as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen.
So we come to our creed, using words, helping us to affirm our belief in God. And I've used the creed that we've been using quite often recently since we've been back in our churches, where the response at the end of each section is, I believe and trust in him, hopefully making it easier for you to join in and affirm your faith in God from home. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I, I believe, believe and, and trust, trust in, in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I, I believe and, and trust, trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. I, I believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust, trust in one God, God Father, Son and, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Richard is going to come and lead us in our prayers of intercession. Friends, at the end of each section, I invite you to respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. And so let us with confidence present our prayers and supplications to the throne of grace. We pray for all those in positions of power, that they may govern with wisdom and integrity, serving the needs of their people. May your reign come, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the church, the sign of your reign, that it may extend your welcome to people of every race and background. May your kingdom come. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for Christians of every denomination, that together we may come to understand the royal priesthood you bestowed on us in baptism. May your dominion come. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose commitment to truth brings them into conflict with earthly powers, that they may have the courage to endure. May your rule come. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. We pray for this community of faith, that, attentive to your word, we may always worship in spirit and in truth. May your reign come. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who suffer, those that we mourn, and those that are alone. Let's hold people that we know before God in a moment of silence. Loving God, May your presence come. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have taught us that the power of the heart is greater than the power of wealth and might. Hear us as we pray for the fulfilment of your reign. We ask this through Jesus Christ our King. To him be glory and power forever. Amen. So we continue in our prayer, bringing them all together as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Collect Prayer for Christ the King Sunday. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. Amen. So a final blessing for each of you. Christ our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love, now and always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.